Charles Kingsford Smith's beloved old bus, ready to take the air again after 10 years on the ground. This is the Southern Cross, famously flown by Charles Kingsford Smith across the Pacific Ocean in 1928. It's Australia's most famous aeroplane, a three-engine monoplane built by Dutch manufacturer Anthony Fokker. Kingsford Smith bought the plane from another Australian, Sir Hubert Wilkins. But today there is confusion about the Southern Cross and whether it was the original plane built by Anthony Fokker or a hybrid created when Sir Hubert Wilkins combined the wing of one plane with the fuselage of another. After the publication of the illustrated Sir Hubert Wilkins book, I received emails asking me to confirm different theories. So I'm going to talk about where this confusion came from and look at what the actual truth is. The story of the plane being a hybrid really begins in the book The Old Bus, written by Kingsford Smith and published in 1932. Smithy explains how Sir Hubert Wilkins had originally had two planes to explore the Arctic, but the three-engine Fokker had been damaged. Wilkins also had a single-engine Fokker, which had also been damaged. He had built the plane that would become the Southern Cross by combining the fuselage of one with the wing of the other. In the book, The Old Bus, Smithy writes, In the reconstruction, Wilkins had accidentally improvised a new type of plane using the good wing of the F7 with the single motored fuselage of the other. This is the beginning of the story that the Southern Cross was a hybrid that uh, two planes were combined to create a very special one. The idea of it being a unique plane was romantic. In books and films, the story was told and retold. So we scouted around and decided the best plane was a Fokker Trimotor. The best engine was a right whirlwind. Then we heard that Sir Hubert Wilkins had used one for his Arctic expedition. It had crashed and we prepared it with bits from another one. But he actually made it a better plane. So, it's a bit of a bitter. But there she is. Southern Cross. But is the Southern Cross actually a composite of two Fokker planes? Did C. Hubert Wilkins create something very special when he put the wing of one plane onto the fuselage of another? Let's go back almost a hundred years and take a look. Sir Hubert Wilkins was born in South Australia in 1888. After teaching himself cinematography, he traveled to England in 1912, where he became interested in aviation. He went on his first polar expedition in 1913 and spent three years in the Arctic. When he learnt about the war in Europe, he traveled to the Western Front where he worked as Australia's official photographer. After the war, he wanted to use aeroplanes to explore Antarctica. He joined two expeditions to Antarctica to gain experience, but was still unable to raise funds to buy planes for his own expedition. In 1926, Wilkins was offered the opportunity to lead an American expedition to the Arctic. The expedition was sponsored by businessmen from Detroit and was known as the Detroit Arctic Expedition. Wilkins had the budget to purchase two planes from the Dutch manufacturer Anthony Fokker. One was the Fokker F7 single engine, which had been built in America. It had a six-cylinder inline water-cooled Liberty engine. The other was a Fokker F7 with a wider wing and three right whirlwind air-cooled radial engines. This plane had been built in Holland. Anthony Fokker was particularly proud of his new three-engine plane. He had already built many of the single-engine planes, but he wanted one that was bigger and safer to carry passengers. He did that by building one with a wider wing and adding two extra engines. This is the original specification sheet for the three-engine plane that was sold to Sir Hubert Wilkins. You can see that Wilkins has written across the bottom. This is the type of airplane that I will have, but mine will be a bit larger than this one. George. He was born George Hubert Wilkins, 
and went by the name George uh, before he was knighted. When he was knighted, he uh, preferred to be known as Sir Hubert. There's a few interesting things about this spec sheet, which is really a kind of sales brochure. Fokker talks about the importance of added safety in carrying capacity, especially for passenger flights. He explains how taking the single engine Fokker F7 and making it a three engine plane gave it a longer range and safety because if one engine stopped, it could still be flown using the remaining two. He also says on the spec sheet, the radial air cooled engines have a further great commercial advantage in their accessibility, quick removability and easy replacement of major parts. The engines were slung beneath the wing. They were air cooled so you didn't need the plumbing of radiators and you could take them off quickly if you wanted to. And Fokker liked parts to be interchangeable. So in 1926 Wilkins had two of these planes, an F7 single motor and an F7 tri-motor. Wilkins wanted to explore the Arctic north from Barrow, Alaska and, if possible, fly to the North Pole and across the Arctic Ocean to Europe. To do that, he had to get the planes to a landing field as far north as possible. Both Fokker planes were crated and taken from Fokker's factory in New Jersey across America by train to Seattle. From there they were loaded on board a ship and taken to Seward, Alaska. At Seward, they were put back on a train and taken to Fairbanks, which was as far north as the rail line went. This is some film footage of one of the Fokkers being unloaded from the train at Fairbanks in 1926. I can't tell from the footage which Fokker it is. At Fairbanks, once they were assembled, the planes were christened. The single motor plane was called the Alaskan. The tri-motor was called the Detroiter because Wilkins was being sponsored by businessmen from Detroit. This is the single motor Alaskan this is the tri-motor Detroiter. Now at this point things started to go badly wrong. First the three engine plane was crashed damaging the front mounting and engine but not the wing. While it was being repaired Wilkins made a number of flights in the single engine Alaskan from Fairbanks north over the Endicott Mountains to Barrow. On one of his flights to Barrow he crashed the single engine Alaskan and broke the wing. It could not be repaired. The crashes and other setbacks meant that Wilkins was able to stockpile fuel at Barrow on the north coast of Alaska, but he was not able to make any flights over the Arctic Ocean before the summer season ended. He stored the fuselage of the single engine Alaskan and the complete three engine Detroiter at Fairbanks and returned to Detroit to face his disgruntled sponsors the businessmen decided not to continue their sponsorship. Wilkins wanted to return to Alaska in the summer of 1927 and make another attempt to explore the Arctic. After so many crashes taking off and landing on rough icy runways, he wanted planes that could take off and land in a shorter distance. He purchased two Stinson biplanes. They were smaller and lighter and Wilkins thought they would be more suitable for the Arctic conditions than the large, heavy Fokkers. The Stinson biplanes were shipped to Fairbanks, Alaska in March 1927, and Wilkins was ready to try again. So now he's at Fairbanks with two Stinson biplanes, the three-engine Fokker and the fuselage of the single-engine Fokker. It's important at this point to understand that the name of the expedition had changed. In 1926, it had been the Detroit Arctic Expedition. In 1927, the Detroit businessmen had stopped their sponsorship, but Wilkins was still being sponsored by the Detroit News newspaper. So for 1927, the name of the expedition was changed to the Detroit News Expedition. That name was painted on the side of the Stinsons. The smaller Stinsons might be more suited for flying over the rough Arctic ice, but they were not big enough to carry everyone and the supplies Wilkins wanted across the Endicott Mountains. 
Wilkins realised that he still needed a large plane with a big fuselage to carry his supplies and support crew from Fairbanks over the mountains to Barrow on the north coast. This is where Wilkins came up with his idea. He had the fuselage of the single-engine Fokker, which was a plane that had already made the flight to Barrow several times, and he had the Fokker with a similar fuselage which had been damaged in a crash, but with the larger wing that supported the extra motors. Wilkins' idea was to remove the wing motors from the larger Fokker, then take the wing off and put it on the fuselage of the Fokker with the six-cylinder water-cooled engine. This was the composite Fokker he came up with in 1927. This was the plane he intended to use to fly his supplies from Fairbanks to Barrow. This is a photograph of the composite plane in 1927. There's a number of things that should be noted. Clearly, it is the fuselage of the single-engine Alaskan with the inline water-cooled engine. To change the name of the expedition from Detroit Arctic Expedition to Detroit News Expedition, Wilkins simply painted over the word Arctic, replacing it with the word News. And under the wing, you can see the mounting points, two at the front and one at the rear, where Anthony Fokker had slung the right whirlwind motors. These mounts were only added to the larger wing built by Anthony Fokker for his three-engine plane. This is the 1927 composite plane, or hybrid. Unfortunately, Wilkins had no more luck with the composite Fokker than he had the year previously. Attempting to take off at Fairbanks, the heavy metal skis did not slide easily and the plane ended upside down, so the composite plane never actually left the ground. Wilkins abandoned plans to use it to fly his crew and supplies to Barrow. He did, however, take a reduced crew, two pilots and a radio operator and himself to Barrow in the Stinsons. He left one plane, one pilot and the radio operator at Barrow, while he and pilot Ben Ileson flew north over the Arctic ice. Ileson and Wilkins landed on the ice a number of times and took depth soundings discovering that the Arctic was actually a deep ocean. After suffering engine trouble, they abandoned the Stinson on the ice and spent a week walking back over the ice to the north coast of Alaska. The following year, Wilkins wanted to try again, and he saw a new lighter plane, a Lockheed Vega. He immediately ordered one. To pay for the Lockheed Vega, he needed to sell something. He took the large wing from the composite plane and put it back on the three-engine fuselage and offered it to Kingsford Smith without the engines. Kingsford Smith and Charles Ulm purchased the new engines and that is the plane that became the Southern Cross. It was the original Fokker three-engine fuselage and original three-engine wing that became the Southern Cross. That left Wilkins with the fuselage of the single-engine Fokker. After pilot Ben Ileson died in a plane crash in 1929, Wilkins donated that fuselage to Ileson's family. Today, the fuselage of the single-engine Fokker is on display at the Hatton Ileson Museum in North Dakota, which is the former Ileson family home. The 1927 expedition name, where the word news has been painted over the word Arctic, can still be seen on the side. Wilkins was in Wellington, New Zealand in 1934 when he met Kingsford Smith again and the pair had their photograph taken together. Today the Southern Cross is preserved in a hangar near Brisbane Airport. Only 1,000 copies of the illustrated Sir Hubert Wilkins have been produced. They are exclusively available from Netfield Publishing. Each book also comes with two replica Sir Hubert Wilkins posters and a 64-page dossier of Sir Hubert Wilkins' unpublished writings. So that's the story of the early days of the Southern Cross, what Smithy called the old bus. I hope you found it interesting. <laughs>